Hi guys, Hannah here at Punk Steading. A couple things before we get started. Yes, I am wearing glasses. I have a mild eye infection that's being dealt with, but for the next few videos, you are going to see Four Eyes Hannah, so my apologies if I just continually adjust my glasses in the videos. I'm just not used to wearing them. Two, if you hear a noise in the background, that is my washing machine going because we are in my garage and I'm doing laundry and today we are talking about laundry detergent. It has been about six-ish months. No, it's been more than that. It's been about 10 months since I started making my own laundry detergent. That happened right after I detoxed all of my cleaning supplies and I started going down a rabbit hole as to, you know, what else could I detox in my house? Laundry detergent was high on the list because we are washing the clothes we wear on a daily basis in soap and what was in that. So I, I tried my best to figure it out. <laughs> Before I get into telling you how I make my soap, I do want to kind of go over what I found in commercial brand laundry soap. To the best of my knowledge, I am going to do a disclaimer here and let all of you know that I am not a chemist by a long shot. I failed organic chemistry, not once, but twice in college, and then decided I did not need chemistry in my life ever again. So I just put chemistry out of my mind until I started researching laundry soap and had to figure out what this list of chemicals meant and what their chemical makeup was. So, Disclaimer done. I am not a chemist. Please do your own research if you have further questions. I do have quite a few links in my blog that will uh, direct you where you need to go in internet cyberspace. Before we get into the chemical makeup, I did want to mention one thing that you'll see really common on labels at the supermarket. And yes, I blocked out this label so they don't sue me. Um, but a big one here is says it contains naturally derived and other ingredients. This is a classic example of what's known as greenwashing. Because of the rise in um, organic products being bought, a lot of commercial industries want to kind of trick you into thinking that their product is green as well, so you will buy it. And this one says contains naturally derived and other elements could mean anything. I only found one naturally derived element, I think, out of this whole list, and it was a thickening agent, so it kind of helped with the gelling portion of the liquid soap, and it wasn't even the main thickening agent. So there was one natural element in there, but the rest was completely chemical-based. And that's really stinks because if you're a busy person and you just want to find something at the store that works for your household, you're gonna see this naturally derived ingredient and you're gonna buy it because you're a busy person and you don't have time to sit there and figure out what every single one of these uh, chemical compounds are. So just be aware that that does happen a lot, unfortunately. That being said, let's get into the chemical compounds as best I understand them. There were three chemical compounds that I was kind of iffy about once I went through this list. The first one was, and I wrote it down so I try not to mispronounce it, sodium laureth sulfate. Sulfates, again to the best of my knowledge, are a type of chemical compound that traps oil and dirt um, and other grime in a kind of water bubble. So it lifts it out of whatever it is you put it on, whether it's your clothes, your skin, your hair, whatever. It lifts it out, it traps it in a water bubble, and it rinses it down the drain. And that seems great. Um, and we'll get into more of what it does to your skin and your hair, allegedly, when we have my personal care detox video next week. But there have been a lot of crazy claims about SLS, sodium laureth sulfate, from like the 90s up to the present. Some people claim it's simply a skin irritant, some people claim that, you know, it caused their eyes to completely redden, it, you know, it 
it can't be ingested because it's poisonous. Some people have claimed it's caused cancer and it, everything in between. So I went to a few scientific articles and I read the studies and what seems to be the consensus is that to the best of our knowledge it does not cause cancer. And two, it is only an irritant if the concentration is higher than a certain percentage. I did find varying percentages. Um, some claim it's 1%, some claim it's 5%, uh, some claim it's like 7%. So we're not, I'm not really sure on the concentration, but you know, it shouldn't be too much of an irritant if it's in a low concentration. Unfortunately, I don't know how concentrated it is in here. I know that some skin products and shampoos where, you know, you want those oils out, um, that can be a fairly high concentration and that's why some people's skin is sensitive to certain products. Again, to the best of my knowledge. So SLS was the first one. Again, I had done research for days on this and I still had absolutely no clue what was the correct answer. Was it extremely toxic? Was it not? What was in, like, what was the concentration in here? I couldn't figure it out. And through that research, I found a laundry detergent recipe that didn't use SLS, those sulfates, at all. So I had to kind of rely on what I did know. And that was, I had a recipe in front of me where SLS wasn't a factor. So whether it was toxic or not, which I didn't know, this recipe this for organic soap claimed that SLS wasn't necessary. So don't know if it's toxic, but it's not necessary to get your clothes clean. So that was good. The second chemical that I found in the list on the cleaner that I, you know, um, didn't really like was fragrance. And unfortunately, fragrance is a blanket term that could mean a lot of different things. Normally you think of fragrance as, oh, you know, you grind up some plants and you put it in your um, product. But unfortunately that isn't the case. That could be mean a whole slew of different things. It could mean chemicals. It could mean a bunch of different reactions. It could mean they put something in there to mask another smell, which is why you should always get fragrance free and not unscented. Unscented stuff could still have chemicals in there to mask smells. Fragrance free uh, just doesn't have anything. Um, so yeah, it said it had fragrance and I unfortunately don't know what that means. Again, I had this all natural, all like DIY recipe in front of me that claimed, you know, they didn't use any fragrances. So again, not sure how much fragrance is in here not sure if it's toxic or not but again it wasn't necessary according to this DIY recipe to get my clothes clean and that was a plus. The third chemical that I saw on my list that kind of caused me pause was tetrasodium EDTA and after a little bit of digging I saw that that was <laughs> sodium cyanide and formaldehyde, the same thing used to embalm dead people, squished together. And again, as far as I can tell, I'm not an organic chemist, chemist by any means. When you squish them together, they kind of lose their um, toxicity elements because formaldehyde is a known carcinogen if exposed in high concentrations for long periods of time. I don't think you're gonna get that much formaldehyde in your laundry detergent. Uh, but that is a known carcinogen in high concentration over a long period of time. And sodium cyanide is obviously poisonous. So I don't know the chemical reaction when it squishes them together. They probably cancel each other out, but I couldn't really find any information on that or else I couldn't understand it. <laughs> um, so the only reason tetrasodium EDTA is in here is to preserve shelf life. Since I am making my own detergent, I don't really need to preserve shelf life. I'm not worried that this sits on Walmart's shelves for you know a year or two or in a storage facility for a year or two. I'm gonna make it and then I'm gonna use it. So that was also an unnecessary chemical.
Okay. <laughs> After days and days of research, I was completely burnt out and was just ready to make my own DIY laundry detergent with as few chemicals as possible. Because again, even though some of these chemicals weren't toxic or I didn't think they were toxic, they were unnecessary to have in my home. And I don't know, having less chemicals in my home is just more appealing for me personally. Without further ado, let's get into it. My recipe calls for and I have um, a link to the recipe down below. This is not my recipe, someone else's recipe. She does two gallons of it at the time and I listed the recipe as two gallons in my blog, but it's just me and sometimes my partner. So I'm going to make a gallon batch today instead of the two gallons listed. But if you have a large family, then feel free to go ahead and make two gallons. So my one gallon batch needs a quarter cup baking soda. I got this big box for like 250. A quarter cup of washing soda. And what this is, it's a similar compound to baking soda. It's just a little bit more basic. So on the pH scale, um, seven is neutral, one is the most acidic, 14 is the most basic. Um, so baking soda sits right at an eight. It's a little bit basic. This sits kind of at a, like a 10 or 11. So it's a little bit more basic and it does a little better job at lifting the stains and the dirt and the grime out of your clothes. This honestly was difficult to find. Um, I looked at every single recipe with washing soda in it and they're just like, it's at your local grocery store. I went to my local grocery store. It wasn't there. I went to Fred Meyer. They were out. I went to Target. They didn't have it. So I ended up going to Walmart and I found it so much of it at my local Walmart for like $3. So Walmart has this for $3. And then my handy dandy Dr. Bronner's soap. Again, I use this for everything. This guy makes an appearance in all three of my detox videos. Dr. Bronner's soap can be used for pretty much anything. This pure Castile soap, meaning it is plant oil based with no harsh chemicals and no harsh fragrances either. When they do have fragrances, it's um, by essential oils and not chemical based. Okay, so what you want to do is I'm going to start with a quart cup of water. I'm going to pour it in my handy dandy bucket. You don't have to use a five gallon bucket, but this is what I have. So I just pour it in there. And I take my scoopy. And that is a quarter cup washing soda in there. And a quarter cup baking soda in there. And I want to dissolve those powders pretty completely before I move on. So I have my handy dandy whisk and all of this stuff I just came from my kitchen. I don't need any special supplies or ingredients or anything like that. You can just use what you have. definitely use a an electric mixer for this as well. I just don't have any outlets here, so I'm using a hand whisk. All right, that is pretty much broken up. There's still some chunkies in there. And I'll bring the camera over so you can see what it looks like. This is a nice white liquid. And now it's time for the last and final ingredient, Dr. Bronner's soap. It calls for three quarters cup for two gallons. So I'm gonna do a little less than half a cup for this one. Uh, probably a third of a cup would work a little bit better. 
This doesn't have to be exact. This one smells really citrusy and nice. This is going to be a theme. I absolutely love the smell of citrus. So, whoop. there we go. A little bit more. Just wash that out of there. Again, let's do your little mixy mix. And that's foaming up really nicely. See right there. And all you do after that is pour the rest in. So let's see, there's four quarts to a gallon. One's already in there. So that's one more. It's a half gallon. And one more half gallon of water. And we'll do another mixy mixy mix. it guys is see what I got in there nice foamy soap so this part gets a little bit messy but all I do is use a plastic funnel I finally got some funnels and pour it from the five gallon bucket into here I might just pour it in here first and then go in but anyway that's literally all I have left to do this stuff works really really great like i said i've been using it for 10 months on multiple washing machines and i haven't had any issues um, um it works in high efficiency washing machines it works in washing machines at the laundromat no issues whatsoever and it really takes the stains out of my clothes so i am hard on my clothes i work an agricultural job and i work a work trade in a dusty stinky horse barn after work and my hobbies include hiking and foraging and snowboarding and swimming so very rarely a day goes by that I don't get at least one article of clothing dirty and it has lifted all dirt stains all stinky smells under my arms and everything like that and it does smell clean and it looks clean and it feels clean this stuff works. One more thing about the difference between homemade and your store-bought is that this is mainly liquid-based. We didn't put any of that thickening agent in there, so it is going to be quite a bit more liquid than you're used to. And there are going to be a little bit um, of chunkies in there. So what I do before each wash is I just make sure the cap screws on tightly, do a shaky shake, and make sure everything is nice and mixed just before I put it in the washing machine and you can use a third to a half cup depending on how big your laundry load is and that's it guys that's all I do <laughs> it took what five minutes to make maybe and this is gonna last me a while <laughs> so I hope this inspires you to give it a shot um, all of these ingredients, uh, the Dr. Bronner soap I had anyway, but the baking soda and washing soda was, you know, less than six bucks and that's going to last me a really, really, really long time. So feel free to give it a shot. Join me next week when we talk about organic, uh, non-toxic personal care. Bye guys.